Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV. Well, we've made it down to the Southern California here where the temps are quite nice in the low 70s. Uh, T-shirt weathered awesome, made it out of the rain. So I thought I'd give you a little update on the trip down from BC down to Southern California here. People are always asking me, you know, what route do you take? Where do you stay? So I thought I'd just go through where we went. Um, kind of came out of uh, Victoria across the Port Angeles Ferry. So we really like the Port Angeles Ferry uh, out of Victoria because we're usually on Vancouver Island when we leave. So it's very convenient for us. Uh, our rig's about 45 feet, so it was 229 US dollars to make the crossing. It's about an hour and a half. The good part about it is on, on the Victoria side, they do their immigration for US, check your passports and all that. So all you do on the American side is kind of go through customs and agriculture if the guy wants to check you for food. We always just get rid of all our fresh food and stuff like that, so we don't have any food for them to worry about. Uh, it was a breeze this time. Guy asked, like, where you go in Arizona? How long? Almost six months. He's like, have a safe trip. And we were off. So we took the afternoon ferry and we arrived in Port Angeles at around six o'clock. So it was dark, daylight savings time between. So it was all pitch black. So what we did, we just went to the Walmart there. They have uh, quite a nice overnight space in the back of the Walmart. And we needed to do some shopping anyway to replenish our uh, our food stock. So we did that. Next morning we got up and did the drive down, uh, it's the Hood Canal, it's on the 101 uh, leg that kind of goes to the eastern side of the Olympic Peninsula and we stopped at a, a casino that we usually stop at called Little Creek Casino and near Shelton, Washington and Olympia and uh, it's a nice overnight stay. They have an RV park there but they do allow dry camping. Their dry camping lot was actually full of employee parking, I'm like oh crap. Um, but the, the security guard said, no, you can just use the, the paved parking lot. There wasn't very many people there at all, so we just stayed in a different area. And uh, he said they were repairing their parkade. That's why the employees had taken out the usual dry camping spot. Uh, while there, I needed some kind of internet access because uh, our Starlink satellite dish is, I guess, Canadian hardware, and I contacted Starlink, and it won't work in the U.S. I'd have to order American hardware and get an American subscription. So rather than the hassle for six months, I just went down to a, a Cricket Wireless store, and I bought a, it's a Turbo Hotspot 2, and it was $79, a little hotspot we can connect to, hotspot router, and then the data package for it is uh, 100 gigabytes for $55, so pretty good deal. Um, so far we, we're probably averaging, we're going to use about 100 gigabytes for a month. And we've been streaming TV shows and stuff. We just stream at the lowest resolution and it's fine for us. We watch it on a computer. You can add data to that. It's uh, $10 for uh, 15 more gigabytes until your month flips over. And it's prepaid, so it's month to month, no contracts on it. So it would be a good deal for us. The only drawback to it is it runs on AT&T plans. So if you're going to get into a busy area, you're probably going to get knocked down the, the priority list on the cell tower and you might not get a great connection. But so far, so good for us. We've been, all those places we've stayed at, we've been able to connect through that. So after that, we decided let's get to the coast. And we went to another casino we like called Quinault Beach in Ocean Shores, Washington. And it's you park in, a, in a, a dirt parking lot, but you're right just on the other side of the dunes of the beach and away from the casino. Uh, I think it used to be free, but uh, this time it was uh, $10 a night and then 20 on Friday and Saturday. But that was okay. We kind of just hunkered there because the weather was uh, was pretty, pretty crappy. One night it really rained. Um, and we were just getting out of BC in time because they've been hit with massive uh, rainstorms one after the other and they've had some pretty serious flooding over in the lower mainland and, and the mountains and they've actually wiped out quite a few of the highways there so they're really having a tough time with uh, getting goods in and out and getting the highways back so feel for the people back there hope you get things sorted out sooner than later Anyway, next thing we wanted to do is uh, we, we headed down to Oregon, another another about a two-hour hop or so near Cannon Beach to a, a state park we really like called Nehalem State Park. Now, I've done a video on that before, so I didn't do a, a video about it. Um, I'll link to my Oregon videos if you want to want to go through them. I only did one video when I was in Oregon this time, and that was our next hop, which was uh, South Beach State Park, which 
We stayed at a couple times, but I never did a video in that area. It's in the Newport area, so I did a video where I went up on the the bridge there, and also one, explored one of the the lighthouses in the in the natural area around that. So that was cool. I'll link to that video. Um, we spent three days at Nehalem and five days at South Beach because the weather was getting quite nice. The sun was starting to come out more and more, and there was pretty good uh, pretty good days there actually for November. There were some clear sunny days on the coast. Uh, next jump down was to Winchester Bay, and we've been there before, and I've done a video before, a link to that. It's uh, Salmon Point Marina. This time of year, there's barely any campers there, so we had the whole kind of, there's a dry camping jetty there you can you can camp on. And again, the weather was pretty nice, so we stayed there for three days, but it was starting to degrade. We could feel the, the damp cold was getting worse and worse in our bones, so rather than continue south anymore, we decided to, to fast track our, our trip down south and to hit I-5 and go down Interstate 5 so we could, you know, book, book it and make some time um, getting down to the desert as quick as we could. So uh, we jumped over to uh, another couple hours over to Seven Feathers Casino. Uh, they have a beautiful uh, kind of dry camping, nice and level. That's one thing. Most casinos aren't that level. But you can go there and you can actually stay five nights if you want in their dry camping lot. They also have a fancy RV park nearby. They have a, a big truck stop there with some of the, the cheapest fuel in Oregon. It's a busy little place. I think it was three twenty nine dollars for diesel. And it was it was a hopping little place because people come there and fill up before they, they head into California or whatever. Uh, so we stayed there a couple nights, and uh, then the next hop was a, quite a long hop. We went over what they kind of call the hump, where you go over a few passes, a Siskiyou Pass, and up by uh, Mount Shasta. So you get up around 3,500, 4,000 feet or so, and uh, if, if it, the weather is wrong, it can actually get snow and ice up there, so you have to kind of time your, yourself going across that this time of year, but... We were lucky. It's it's been warm. When we went across, it was it was you know, it must have been about 50, 50 to 55 degrees out. No no threat of any ice or snow, and it was dry pavement and and sunny. So it was a good trip over. Down the other side, we stopped in Reading and hit a camping world. I needed a few things, and they allow overnighting at that camping world in their parking lot. So we just dry camped in their parking lot. Got in there around three or four o'clock and. Bought some stuff in their store and overnighted and got up. Uh, another couple hours, we stopped at a casino called Cash Creek Casino. We had discovered that last year, and uh, they allow overnighting there. I called them and they said 48 hours you could overnight. We didn't have to go in and register or anything. And the unique thing about their dry camping is it's way up on a hill. Some people might not like it because you have to tow up onto this this little knoll or up on a hill, and it's a gravel parking lot. And warning, it's quite unlevel. I was able to slide into a spot where the the trailer I used two um, two by eight boards that I put together and was able to to get the trailer level. So not too bad, but you know it is warning. <laughs> it's mostly pretty unlevel there, but the view is spectacular. You're looking down on all of all of all of uh, farms and things like that, fruit farms, and then the casinos down below, and they've planted a lot of nice trees, and the fall colors were out. And there's a lot of bird life down up there. I saw ravens and hawks and falcons and things like that. So we stayed there our 48 hours and moved on. Uh, now we're down <clears throat> at a, a place called Harris Ranch Inn and Restaurant. And it's off of I-5, a little kind of like uh, northwest of Bakersfield. Um, it's got a big flat gravel parking lot and it's for trucks and RV parking, mostly trucks. <laughs> There's a lot of trucks that were here last night. So if you hate the noise of trucks, you'd hate this, but we don't mind the drone of trucks. It actually makes us sleep quite well. Uh, went in this morning, they have an awesome bakery and they actually sell steaks and stuff like that. They have restaurants and all that, all that kind of stuff. So people, people really like this overnight spot and it, and it's free. So you can just come in here, pull in. And it's nice at the big, huge lots of level and everything, so you don't have to unhook or anything like that to level the rig. And that's about it. That's the the journey down and all our little stops. Um, I'll link to a uh, a map I put together showing showing the route, and uh, and you can always uh, follow my newsletter too. Um, I'll put a link to my newsletter because every month I put out a a newsletter, um, kind of with links to all the the videos and posts I've done, but also 
a bit about ourselves, what's going on in our lives, and how our RV journey is going. Anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time, Ray from LoveYourRV.com. Cheers, everyone.